Welcome to our series on the book of Psalms. This is chapter 45, Psalm 45 today, and we've entitled it a royal wedding. Uh, you'll see exactly what we mean, and there'll be a little bit of explanation in just a, just a minute. Uh, this is the outline on the book of Psalms, and you can see in the Hebrew Bible, that they really have five books that make up the book of Psalms, and they're denoted that way. The introduction to this psalm is uh, written, some instructions and, and a dedication to the chief musician, upon Shoshanim, and it's for the sons of Korah, Mashil, a, a song of loves. Okay, that's all pre-verse 1 uh, in this psalm. And so let's break that out and we'll get an understanding of it. The chief mus musician is probably Asaph. Um, it's one of three men and he usually is the one that gets them uh, dedicated to or the instructions are given to him. Upon Shoshanim uh, means lilies. And this is about a royal wedding, as you saw the title. And so there's going to be flowers that are involved here. Also, it's written for the sons of Korah. Uh, Korah was a, uh, was a priest and his sons uh, and all of his descendants. For we actually read about the sons of Korah in the book of Nehemiah uh, for 400 years later. And they are, are priests also, but they were temple priests uh, in the music department. That might be the easiest way to explain it. And so they spent their life serving the Lord, uh, leading probably worship, playing instruments, uh, writing the music, perhaps, to some of these psalms. And as I mentioned before, mashil means skillful, and th that comes up in 13 psalms. Here's a listing of that, um, if you want to check that out. And then finally, it says this is a song of loves. Um, this is about Solomon and Pharaoh's daughter and their wedding, but it is very symbolic of Jesus Christ and the church and his wedding to the church, the bride of Christ, and that is yet to come. And so here's the background. King Solomon has made peace with the Pharaoh of Egypt. Part of the agreement was that Solomon would take Pharaoh's daughter as his wife. Uh, the psalm picks it up from there. This is also a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ and his bride, the church. And so you're going to see some, you're going to see the parallels all along here as we go. So this fits in chronologically if you want to read about the wedding in 1 Kings chapter 3. And here's the outline. There's uh, the prelude music. Think of a church and the prelude uh, organ music before a wedding often and the theme was my overflowing heart uh, there's words to the groom there's words to the bride and then there's close one closing remark to the bride and groom in verse 17 actually there's two closing things there so let's get right into the word of God and this is the prelude that sets this all up my heart is indicting a good matter I speak of the things which I have made touching the king. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. And so there's some, there's some similes here, um, talking about a heart. The heart is the inner man in the Hebrew. Indicting is, is moving or I'm stirred to write about a good or an agreeable, a wonderful thing about a husband and a wife in this sense, about the promise of Jesus coming back for the church, his bride. And he goes on to say, my tongue is the pen of a ready writer. The word pen in the Hebrew is stylus, but we would understand it as pen. And they're ready to write the following things. So as the wedding is ready to proceed, um, we're going to see the words to the groom. And in this sense, these should be the words to our Savior, 
the Lord Jesus Christ, and it will describe him in a lot of different ways in the first nine verses. So let's jump right in it. I put them in red so that we can number them or look, or just see them and pull them out if we can. And so the first thing is this, thou art fairer than the children of men. Grace is poured into your lips. Therefore, God has blessed thee forever. Fair means beautiful or handsome. Grace has charm. But think of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's fairer than 10,000, the song that we sing. He's fairer than the lilies of the valley. And this is music. The psalm, all these psalms have music to them. And so just think of the praise and how we, we as God's people in the church would be praising uh, the Lord Jesus Christ for who he is. He, he is grace. It's because of grace that we can be saved. But these are wonderful things to be said of, of, of the groom and who he is. Gird thy sword and put on your belt, upon your thigh, O most mighty, strong, and with your glory and with your majesty. The, this is verses strength and the, as, the, as Pharaoh's daughter praises Solomon and speak these things, we would speak these things to the Lord. He is strong and mighty, the sword. Also, O most mighty is, is said, and with glory and with majesty. Then we know that the word of God tells us in verse 4, And in thy majesty ride prosperously because of truth and meekness and righteousness. And thy right hand shall teach thee terrible things. Actually, the word is awesome. So as the groom rides upon the, the, the wedding horse, the steed, it ride, the, the bride is saying, Ride quickly prosperously is quickly, come quickly, because of truth and meekness, because of your humility and your righteousness. And thy right hand shall teach thee awesome things. And so we're praising the Lord of, in majesty, in truth, in meekness, and in righteousness, and that we have an awesome God. In the word terrible, um, things, things that the to stand in awe over that the Lord is great and powerful. Your arrows are sharp in the heart of the king's enemies, whereby the people fall under thee. Once again, the bride, uh, Pharaoh's daughter, looks at Solomon and says, you're a mighty warrior, and I see God has blessed you. And we can also say of the Lord Jesus Christ, he is a mighty warrior, and his word is sharp. His word is the word of God. And it, uh, the, the Bible tells us that it's sharper than any two-edged sword. So again, a description of the Lord. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of your kingdom is a right scepter, or an upright one. And Solomon ru ruled well most of the time. Jesus Christ rules perfectly for eternity and forever and ever. You love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore, God, thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Gladness is joy and gladness and his fellows, the worshipers. And so the bride speaks of Solomon and says, your God has anointed you with joy and with worshipers. And uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, um, the Spirit of God, has anointed us with oil of gladness and with worshiping and fellowship with the Lord. All your garments smell good, is really what it is, smell of myrrh and aloes and cassia out of the ivory palaces, whereby they have made you glad. And I've given you some history on this, where myrrh comes from. It's Arabian gum from the bark of a tree, and it was used in sacred oil and perfume. Um, we know of myrrh, in the scriptures of the three wise men brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh um, to the, the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, the aloes are, come from aloe trees, and cassia is a spice. It's like a powdered bark, like cinnamon, and an ivory. 
It's like the ivory in a tooth, talking about the smile of, out of the joy, the, the, the beautiful white, the purity of that. And so we think of the Lord, that he is all of this, and yet Solomon was described as this. King's daughters were among your honorable women. Upon your right hand did stand the queen in gold of Ophir. And Ophir means reduced to ashes. And just the note here of where this place is, it's a land or a city in southern Arabia once again. And on Solomon's trade route, where gold was traded for goods, characteristic of very fine gold and uh, things made of gold. So we see the regality of this, and Jesus will come in honor and regal. He will come as the king, the king of kings, and he, we will know him because of, of who he is. Just like Solomon was known, Jesus will be known when he comes for the church. Now here's words to the bride. Things that we should listen to as God's people but these are the words that come to the bride. Hearken, O daughter, and consider and incline your ear. Forget also thine own people and your father's house. What he's saying was, you belong to me now. He says, you need to listen and listen and do what I ask because you're coming into my home and in my relationship and your father is not over you any longer. I will be your protection. I will love you. And so forget your people, the Egyptians, you belong in, with my people. So shall the king greatly desire your beauty, for he is thy Lord and worship him also. And as God's people, we need to desire the, the beauty of the Lord and worship him. And the daughter of Tyre shall be there with a gift. Even the rich among the people shall entreat thy favor. It mentions Tyre and it's a Phoenician city. It's on the Mediterranean coast north. Um, really just barely north out of the country of Israel. Um, the word favor is just talking about your, your face. Your people look at your face and read your face, and there's joy in that. The king's daughter is all glorious within. Her clothing is rock gold. She, look, she looks good, but she's glorious within. She looks good without, but she's better within. And God's people, we need to look good in this world, not like slobs. We need to dress fine, not necessarily finest or finely, but wash our clothes, look good, smell good. But we, sh we need to be better within. She shall be brought unto the king and raiment and needlework. The virgins, her companions that follow her, shall be brought unto thee or brought into unto thee. With gladness and rejoicing shall they be brought. They shall enter into the king's palace. What a joy it will be to be brought into the, into the palace of the Lord. Instead of your fathers shall be your children, whom you may make princes in all the earth. And so what a blessing it's talking about. You're, you will have children, and the relationship that we're in there will be children. As God's people... Um, the children that we would speak of would be spiritual ones that we've shared Christ with and come to know the Lord. And then the closing remarks to the bride and the groom. I will make your name to be remembered in all generations. Therefore, shall the people praise thee forever and ever. Uh, Solomon w was speaking mainly mainly, or the, should I say the writer is speaking to both of these and saying, in this psalm, we will sing this in all generations and people will remember you, King Solomon and your bride. But we also know that it's written down that as God's people, we will be remembered and we need to praise the Lord forever and ever. This was this was this teaching today was just to whet your appetite, as, and I say that with most of the psalms I teach. I want you to dig into it further. There's a lot of yummies in here, but these are not to go two or three hours and one psalm, but it's something that we can rejoice together in, that we've listened to, that we've read this psalm, and then perhaps made notes to go back and to do some, some research and some study on your own really dig into God's word. 
I want to thank you for uh, listening. This is where I can be found. I can send you a Word document that's the, the study outline of this. I'd be glad to do that for you. There's my email address. And God bless you. Um, look up. The Lord Jesus Christ is coming back. And I uh, hope to see you in Psalm 46.